so we're going live i'm about to stream the meeting on youtube so hopefully um if you guys can check in there i'll try to manage this chat all the guys that are here you can also use chat okay yeah please feel free and i will um if you guys can check in there i'll try to manage this chat all the guys that are yep so we're we're just going live on youtube now um so I you can to also use chat okay welcome you guys in. yeah I please feel continue. free and i will um if you guys can check in there I'll, I'll try to manage this chat all the guys that are yep so okay. we're, we're just going live on youtube now um so I you to can also okay so i've closed it can someone just let me know that it's working it should be live on youtube um i just closed that so i don't hear myself twice but I want to welcome everybody in for our second webinar on the brain hacks for teens programming. I'm so excited to be here today because we'll do a little bit more coaching. We'll look at Erickson's approach and what makes Erickson coach training really special. Um, and of course, as promised, we will do another intro to me briefly, the program um, and We'll have an interview with Leo, who's taken part in Erickson programming, a teen who has experienced it himself, which will be hugely beneficial, I think. Um, and then, of course, we'll invite some questions about the coaching approach, the methodology, this program in particular, and the details, and any related questions. And of course, if at any point in the chat you have a question that you want to make sure is addressed, please feel free to add it there. Um, and for anyone that's here live from YouTube, I just want to invite you to also join us in the room. So there should be a Zoom room invitation that you can click and enter so that you can be here with us in real time. Otherwise, please feel free to post your questions in the YouTube chat. And we do have a lovely Erickson facilitator, Nadezhda, there ready to also connect with you. So please feel free to use the chat if something comes up in the meantime. Um, and again, I will post this in the Zoom room. It's more information if at any point you want to take a look at that. Um, I am just admitting we've got a couple more people joining us now. Welcome. And great, I'm glad that it's live on YouTube. That's fantastic. So thank you for bearing with me as we get started and make sure everybody's here in the room. Um, Right. I think we're we're just about ready to go. And I want to welcome everyone that's here with us in the Zoom meeting, as well as everyone on YouTube. I'm really thrilled to be here with you today. My name is Kalina Maletic. I'm a PCC level coach, originally from Toronto, but joining you today from Switzerland. And I really want to thank you for being here. A little bit more on me is that I started coaching about four years ago and got involved with Ericsson where I did my ECPC, which is my Ericsson Certified Professional Coach designation. And from then on, Ericsson has really had my heart and I've been involved in the community as a TA, recently joining on as an enrollment advisor and now very excited to be here to support this program of Teen as Coach Brain Hacks for Teens. What I'm excited about is that I think as a teenager, there's so much that we're figuring out, um, especially around who we are, who we want to be in our independence. And this course is specifically going to focus on communication skills and how to feel more confident and ready to be that person that you want to be. So I'm excited to delve a little bit more into the content of that. Um, but that's a bit about me. If you want to hear more, please feel free to ask any questions. Um, but generally a PCC level coach who has her own coaching practice and is really uh, thrilled to support teens and young adults. Um, I have some experience with San Francisco State University um, and high schools in the greater Toronto area as well as in the States. So I love, I love the age group mostly because again, I think it's a really exciting time for independence, for figuring out what's important to us um, and, and curiosity as well. So again, we'll get into the content, but that's just a brief bit about me. As for the program itself, 
Uh, we'll get into the, the program details a little bit later, but I'd love to cover high level sort of what it is that we're, we're hoping to create in this program and what we would love teens to walk away with at the end of it. Um, Nicole, who's here on the call today, had a real stroke of genius in recognizing that right now with COVID-19 and schools closed, extracurriculars canceled, there's a huge opportunity for teens that can't get out of the house to connect with not just peers from school, but actually new connections and friendships from teens all around the globe, as well as to learn some really important life skills that transcend high school and really move into any situation like a potential interview, group work, relationships with parents, with friends, with teachers, with future bosses, with ourselves. Um, she really felt that this was a great time and I agreed and this, this lovely project was born. And so what we hope for teens to walk away with from this program is again, an enhanced sense of confidence because they really know who they are, what they stand for, what's important to them. They have some tools to describe and understand what success means like to them, not just in terms of school and grades or even a job, but really the skills, the values, the, the type of person they wanna be and what success would be like moving forward into high school and beyond. We also wanna really support with communication. So things like giving and receiving feedback, how to speak with your parents or teachers, people that sometimes have authority talking with them in a way so that the things that you want to convey are respected, heard, acknowledged, and then actually acted upon. We definitely want learners to walk away with some knowledge of the brain and how using neuroscience, you can really hack your brain in order to maximize your potential, become a more effective thinker. And with that, again, not only have conversations that lead to change with your parents, teachers, or friends, but also structure your own time and have more knowledge of yourself so that you're happier just in the way that you're running your life. It can seem, I think, as a teenager that there's so many other forces sort of telling you what to do. And what we really want from this program is for teens to be able to start asking questions and also carving out where their personal power is. So the things that you do have control over and figuring out how you want to structure your time, which extracurriculars you want to be involved in and how ways to understand where your time is going and reduce stress and feel more competent and confident with the way that you're approaching again, courses, extracurriculars, just about anything in your life. Really it's, it's a mindset shift that we're really excited about I think and Erickson is so primed to do that um I think with this online programming that's really flexible Erickson also brings 40 years of training globally which means a lot right because this content is not new it's been tried and true for 40 years and it really does work it was Erickson was founded in 1980 and has programs running all over the world for adults. So the stuff really works. And of course, when it comes to tools, we'll have some really great tips and tricks and you'll be able to experience it in class. So this isn't an, a new course that's just gonna bring you homework and more reading. This is about bringing learning into the room as you're there in real time. Um, and I hope to actually deliver on that even today, because we'll be doing an interview, we'll be doing some in-time coaching. So I really want to walk the walk here today and have it be um, as experiential as possible. So um, Erickson, again, is a very special place in community and I'm, I'm grateful to be here. And something that I can say um, additionally is that I really hope to have some fun and have this be interactive and just convey to you guys that although there is content and 40 years of tried and true methodology behind this. Um, this is also a really great space to get creative, get curious and explore. So the teens that are grow that are joining this program will be able to collaborate with me and with us to create the experience that we're having. So it's definitely not my intention to um, just deliver information. My hope is really to actually get your insights and to make the course as applicable to you as possible. So if you like something that's happening, we can do more of that. And if there's something that you're not as into, we can shift based on what the group really wants and needs. So I'm really excited to have that flexibility here in this course. And I think it's going to be a huge advantage to the way that we're running it. Um, 
So I do want to have time for the fun stuff, which is um, interviewing Leo, who has, as I mentioned, experienced the task modules and Erickson's coaching training um, and has gained some great coaching skills as a result. So um, I would love to welcome in Leo here today. And thank you so much for being here with us again this week to chat a little bit about your experience. Hello. Hey. All right. And I'm just going to take a momentary pause because we have a couple of people waiting to join into the actual room with us. So just one second. Welcome, Leo. Thanks. Um, and welcome to all the new, new faces in the room. Um, we'd love to hear from you in the chat, hear where you're calling in from today, or maybe if you're a teen or if you're a parent, we'd love to hear from you and get an introduction. So Leo, again, thank you for being here. And I would love to hear just a little bit more. I mean, again, we chatted on this last week, so I wanna make sure we're talking about fresh and new concepts. Um, but I would love to start with just hearing a little bit about what it was that was most valuable to you about joining a coaching training with Erickson as a teen in your, at your age? Um, I think the most uh, valuable thing about uh, joining such a thing is being able to like really under, uh, understand more about like how people think and how you yourself think so you can like more effectively plan things and like plan your day or influence other people. Yeah, very cool. It's a huge skill set. Again, no matter if you're speaking about relationships with teachers and parents, or if it's siblings and friends, or if it comes to, again, your own individual mindset. So great points. And I'm curious, what really stands out in terms of changes or shifts in your behavior since doing the, the program? Um, I think after doing the program, it's uh, the biggest change in behavior is more like um, every day would be more intentional and would be more um, like directed instead of just like going through like in the past, before the program, I was still like go through everything and I was still the same things every day, though I wouldn't really be sure of why I did it. And I would kind of be like only half present when doing it. But now after doing the program, I think I'm able to be more mindful when I'm doing uh, certain things and I'm able to be more um, like focused in that way. Sure, absolutely. Focus is, is critical, I think, at any age. Again, I, I mentioned this last time, but I do want to reiterate for everyone that's in the room today. Something that I find so cool about coaching and Erickson is, is really that at any age, I think we can benefit from more self-knowledge, understanding what's important to us. Focus, as Leo, you just mentioned. These are, these are skills that transcend age and I think are really important to everyone, uh, especially now, to really be self-aware and understand, okay, here are our priorities. Here's what we care about. This is what matters. And being confident enough to speak up about it in a way that actually gets you heard. That's another thing, right? If, if we show up as a complainer, if we show up as somebody that um, is just focused on the negative, it's really hard for our audience to actually listen and hear us. But when we can employ some of these skill sets, I, I think it really changes the way that we, we show up and and lead really in our communities or everyday lives. So Leo, I'd love to kind of move to that point and just ask you a little bit about how, how coaching and being able to communicate better and know your why and focus all the things you just mentioned, how has that helped with showing up as a leader at school or with your friends? Uh, I think for being like a leader or having influence with my friend group, it's, more about like it's being able to see things from their perspective and to um, like think of what they want and how what they want from like a group of friends or how and seeing looking for different ways to be able to help them or support them in different times I think is very valuable as it builds like a good relationship with one of them at a time with each one of them at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and tell me a bit more about the relationship piece. So what's changed in your relationships with them? Um, I would say for my relationships with my friends, um, it would be like I'm able to 
with these friends, I, I have like a more natural connection with them. And with them, I can, uh, I, I can sort of be more open to them as well as and let them be more open to me. So we feel more connected as like a friend group because it's kind of like also building rapport and that thing in coaching. So where you, everybody's like comfortable, very comfortable with sharing with each other. Nice. Would you tell me about a time that you had that? A time had, I think it was uh, one time when me and my friends were playing, uh, we went to play badminton. And then one of my friends was going through a sort of struggle in their lives and how some things were not going the best for them. So <clears throat> I tried to like comfort them with different things. And I tried to build like rapport and do that, those kind of things to let them be like be open and feel comfortable to like share some things with me. And in the end, I feel like I really helped them. Nice, super valuable, I'm sure for your friend and for you. And I, that brings up a really good next topic. So Leo, <laughs> thank you. Uh, just around coping with challenges, you know, stress, anxiety, maybe feeling isolated, especially now not being able to see your friends. I'm really curious how coaching skills or the skills that you learned in the program, because there are communication skills beyond coaching as well, right? But how, how some of those tools and skills have helped you to cope with challenges in your own life? Mm, like some challenges in my life right now are like sort of needing to find a sense of direction or it like, yeah, like you said, in this time when like everything's all like kind of blurred together and you don't know what day it is like and that kind of thing so it's, it's important to find the direction uh to go and like an ability to like step forward one step at a time so it's also to do with the um like daily daily activities and like the daily routine that you're able to not just like mindlessly go through the daily routine but to think of like and purposefully uh, do every action and really develop yourself that way yeah, we were talking before and you mentioned a tool that you love using. Tell me a little bit about that, that tool that you use day to day now after the programming. Um, yeah, uh, the tools uh, for quadrants where, I'm a, uh, where I split sort of like my day or like my plans into four sectors. So there's the physical part, uh, which is like exercising every day and um, going for walks outside and that kind of thing. And then there's the relational part, which is like hanging out with friends or like having a uh, quality time with my parents or that kind of thing to have better relationships with other people. And there's also the creative part where it's like to um, have, to develop yourself and to like develop yourself mentally, whether it's like reading books or doing um, math problems or that kind of thing. And then lastly, it's like meaningfully is to look at like the, what the road is ahead. And it's like, it's like planning for the next day or reflecting to see which one, uh, what you, you thought was doing best this day. And so actually nowadays, um, I be, I'm able to track my, um, I'm able to track my own, uh, I track my own like plan progress and I track what I do every day. Uh, so I'm able, so then I can look back on it and I can reflect on it to see what I did the best and what I could improve on. Yeah, very forward thinking and a in, huge initiative. Leo, I, I really commend you. I think that, gosh, I mean, you can really feel the progress and sense of achievement there by doing that on a daily basis. I think, again, it, this program is for teens, but I think even adults would really benefit from doing something like that. So thanks for sharing. I could probably use that in my day to day as well. Um, although I find myself using a lot of relational tools that I've learned through coaching. You mentioned building rapport. Um, so I'm curious, Leo, what about with your family, your parents? How has it shifted the way you interact with, with them? Yeah, um, the way I interact with my parents, I think it's been able to grow because I can see things like I, I've mentioned last week as well, I can see things more from their perspective and I'm able to like communicate with them better or being able to see things from all perspectives before making like a judgment about anything. So then we could have better communication and better understanding of what each other wants. Yeah, for sure. I can see that it helps me, <laughs> helps me with that too. Um, would you tell me about a time that that happened maybe with, with parents or teachers some somebody that sort of 
maybe telling you what to do or asking you hopefully, but a situation where you really use communication skills, building rapport to have that dialogue, understand that other person better. How did you go about that? Yeah, this actually reminds me of a time. So um, I went to this, I went to the summer camp at, uh, at John Hopkins University a while ago. And that at that summer camp, uh, so we were, we just got there. And then on the first day, uh, I was, I signed up for this um, thing called Maze Runner, where basically you would, would go through this sort of maze thing and there's only one correct route. So you would try to collaborate with your teammates to find out that co correct route or so I thought. So then, and the teacher came in and then, but she originally planned for the thing to be silent so that every person would work on it individually. But I thought that it wasn't really the best idea since if we're able to collaborate on this kind of thing, it would, one, it would be more efficient and also it would build teamwork and let all of us be more like friendly towards each other. And I think it's like a great team building exercise for the first day since we're like all new to the uh, summer camp. So I talked with the teacher about this and I actually, uh, this also implemented, um, like I thought about what she, uh, she wanted and what she wa uh, wanted in terms of like all of us kids who just got there at the summer camp. So uh, I said like, so first um, I think uh, your job here is to like make sure all of us at the summer camp have fun and also stay safe and be able to build um, a, like build char characters together. And then, so then I thought, uh, I thought that it would be great. It would be better if we're able to collaborate as a team and collaborate as, uh, as like a group. So we're able to make friends and to have teamwork and all of these great things that would be better if we did it in a group than the, like individually. She in the, eventually she also bought my argument and we did the, so uh, we did the thing first from the first day, we did it like separately. But then next for the next few days throughout the week, we all we did this thing together and we uh, we really had a lot of fun as our group of people and every all of the people in that program. I think there was like 30 people in that group or that in that group of the summer camp really had fun from this one suggestion. Wow, I love that. I mean, you changed the whole course of the way the program was running. That's phenomenal and influential. And I think that's really interesting when we talk about leadership now there are a lot of articles coming out for even managers or leaders of companies that speak to inspirational leadership versus that sort of dictatorship or telling right and coaching really sets us up to ask rather than tell and there's a whole session in this program about that about receiving feedback and giving feedback but also the concept of asking versus telling and how we can be more influential really but also understood and leo i mean what a perfect example of that so thank you for sharing um i'd love to hear just a little bit more about school and maybe projects and how um you know asking powerful questions or being able to communicate has helped you with maybe group work or other things at school and how you show up there mm -hmm. yeah uh for as for group work at school and such, I think in the past, I've tried to like, uh, sort of be like the manager or the thing of my group. So I'm, I like tell everybody what to do, but then sometimes people, like if it all works out and people, everybody listens, then, you know, it works out well, but sometimes people like don't agree or some people have disagreements, different ideas and such. And that's like normal. So we might get into arguments and that kind of thing, but afterwards, like the, after I learned more of the coaching things, I learned to like sort of um, accept everybody's opinions and really listen to everybody's opinions first on the team and then try to put those opinions together to see what we can come up with to like see the values of like synergy and really good teamwork. Yeah, I mean, hey, I, I would love to work for <laughs> a manager like that. I think, again, a very valuable point of having everyone heard, not just to do it as a placeholder, but really because when you put ideas together, you just said it. I mean, there's synergy there. You create new ideas. It's a whole value of being in a group. So, wow, Leo, thanks for sharing. And I, I would love to, um, oh, I'm just here, seeing here in the chat, um, just a little bit on peer pressure and anxiety, um, Leo. What, you know, I'm not sure if that's a part of your experience. I certainly don't want to, assume that 
but I'm um, curious what your thoughts are on dealing with peer pressure in the current environment. I mean, for sure on Instagram, even for me, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, oh, I can't even name all of the platforms. It's really easy to feel like you've got to be perfect all the time. And this online space, even though people might think, oh yeah, we're all at home. So, you know, bullying might be down. I think it's actually really, really easy to get bullied online anytime, even by people that you don't know if you're a gamer too, like you're in, you're gaming and you're talking with people all over the world, sometimes way older than you too. I mean, there's so many online environments where um, there's a lot of pressure to be a certain way and be tough potentially or perfect, look perfect. So I'm really curious, Leo, your thoughts on dealing with peer pressure and anxiety and how being a better communicator or understanding yourself more and what you care about and your values, right? You talk a lot about values and tasks. Um, what about what about those concepts helps you with peer pressure and anxiety? Though I haven't had much experience with like um, bullying or online bullying and that kind of thing. Uh, as for like peer pressure, I think like it's a natural, uh, peer pressure is like a natural thing where like it's, it's like uh, where people like make you uh, try to influence you to make uh, to be part of the group and I think it's like it's a good force if you're able to use it to encourage you and use it to like make you step farther and that's also like um for example there's like uh, some source of um like say negative peer pressure that like try to make you a certain way but some, you can use like to re you can resist this peer pressure and you can um be able to instead uh influence other people and to try to spread your own sense of positive peer pressure. For example, I can like tell my friends to, hey, we should start, um, we should set some goals every day and we should um, try to do some uh, like good things for let's say our minds or our bodies every day. And, and then I can spread my own like positive peer pressure. And now they, if, if like enough people in my friend group, for example, like tell somebody else to like try to be intentional or try to be um, more positive then they'll they'll also try to then they'll also try to be positive because it's kind of like positive peer pressure to uh, push people to be better yeah i like what you're saying it's almost taking something that feels challenging and making it into an opportunity um and something that you can improve upon to to do better and to improve performance again in a more self-guided or self-managed way very cool thanks leo and um, I mean, gosh, we have a few more questions. I want to make sure there's some from YouTube as well. I'm just seeing one. Um, and then Nick, you also asked that. So thanks in, in the chat here. Um, the question is, how would this work with world leaders or managers? Um, so I guess back to the leadership discussion here a little bit about how does this help with, with being a leader? And I mean, my, my initial take just, just briefly would be that I mean, you've heard from Leo around group projects. You've heard from Leo about how to manage different opinions, maybe opposing opinions, how to deliver suggestions in a way that are received really well and receptively to people that are in leadership. So sometimes you can be a manager in a company or you can be a certain level of leader, but then there might be somebody that's a senior leader, a more senior leader, the owner, um, a client. It's, it's about managing expectations, I think, and they're in any role, a job or group at school, I mean, there's so many different stakeholders, right? Or these different people that have weight in the decisions that they're making or the way that things go. And, and I think Leo has touched upon already um, some really great tools that he's learned around communication, feedback, being able to take other people's opinions into consideration. I think world leaders that are able to take their advisors' opinions and also public opinion that's aggregated and really act on that. I think that's a strong world leader, somebody that has those types of, of communication and collaboration skills. Um, but Leo, I mean, I'll, I'll put that one to you as well as one of our final questions for you until we get you back for uh, some coaching with Nick. Um, but I, I would love to just put that to you and say, how do, how do you think this can help world leaders or managers, people in, in companies? I think on the bigger scale of like uh, company leaders or like world leaders, I think it's to, to see like different sorts of 
different sorts of groups and different sorts of people. For example, like there's uh, in different situations, there's always different sorts of different opinions of people and you try to weigh them. For example, like if you're um, uh, like Canada's prime minister or something and you would try to, for example, in this um, coronavirus thing, like what they decided to do with the sh- uh, with like shutting down schools and shutting down like public facilities, like they can weigh like um, the, they can like, weigh different things and the voices of different people so that you can separate them into different groups of people who have like different voices and try to um, so try to empathize with each group individually to see what do they really want and how could that group's needs coincide with the other group's needs. So once you do that with all of the groups, because usually if you emphasize with somebody else, they'll tend to emphasize with you as well. So uh, if you do that, then it causes more cooperation within the groups instead of always trying to like fight each other, always trying to get what only what they want, they can try to make a solution where everybody can get what they want. I love that. That's massive in terms of negotiation skills, which um, the more I read on it, it, we're negotiating and selling things or ideas really every day, no matter our age, right? It, there, there's a lot of negotiating going on personally and professionally. So cool answer. And I think what an interesting topic. I think it'd be a, an interesting discussion to go into world leadership and how that works. Uh, I, I think we'll have to move on for today, but it certainly would be an interesting one to, to discuss further. Um, we've got some, we've got one really great one in the chat from Emily, and I want to ask you this for sure. What motivated you to take this coaching program? And she's thanking you for sharing your learnings and finds you inspiring, as do I. So, agreed. Um, so, yeah, what motivated you to take up this coaching program? Um, like the, the program when currently, right? Yeah, the, what motivated you to, to join the, the program that you took task? What, what motivated you to join? Oh, I think that, uh, so uh, firstly, I think it would, it would have been a great experience to see the world from like a different perspective. And that time, I think I was also a little worried about me because not using my time as efficiently and not like using my talents for the best, like the best. So I thought having this sort of like self-improvement course and that can also train me to help other people would be a really valuable thing for me in the future as it would not only help me manage my own time and my own like priorities, better but also try to help other people with their time and like have more influence in like friend groups and to really help other people as well yeah I love it It, and definitely can be a source of help to deal with school extracurricular activities when school is back being busy with grades and leadership and even moving into university um I think that makes a lot of sense and sure I mean even just on a day-to-day basis. I love what you said, especially now when days really, one day moves into another, as you said earlier. Um, what what better time to get more understanding of, like you said, priorities, time management, how to focus. And we actually have um, one more question here from YouTube before I let you take a break here, Leo, and and try and uh, move into some, some more content on the course for just a moment until we do our live coaching session, which is really exciting. Um, but one more question here from YouTube, and I think it links to what you just said. How will this help me to be more disciplined with practicing for sports? Um, practicing for sports. I think uh, for like coaching to be to help you with like practicing for like sports or any sort of thing that requires a lot of um, requires a lot of commitment and discipline. I think it would probably be like to ask yourself to think like what's actually the value or what, why do you actually want a certain thing? For example, like if you were to want to, let's say, be able to, or like run every, run every day for like two kilometers or something, like why would you want to do that? Like, let's say to improve your own body, to make yourself more fit or to make yourself be like more, have be more energized and have, be able to like, or have like a better sleeping pattern. Also like these kind of things to ask yourself why, to do something before like actually doing it will probably motivate you to go through uh, on more of the way. Yeah, I love that. Asking ourselves questions in order to remain committed. And I think you mentioned in the beginning asking yourself, but that's something you can do throughout as well, right? I mean, you've mentioned something really valuable, not only when you start any type of goal, right? In the beginning, you want to start running, but as you kind of go through that process and feel, oh, man, you know, I've done this four days in a row. I kind of don't feel like it today. 
another powerful question, Leo, like you mentioned, okay, wait, you can remind yourself, why, why am I doing this? Why did I start doing this? Why is this important to me? Right. I mean, that's a key question. Um, yeah, which is uh, massive. So thanks so much, Leo. And I want to give you um, just a moment to, to take a break here before we start coaching. So I'll, I'll just give you a second here, but thank you so much for showing up again and really giving us some amazing insights into what you've learned, your experience, um, and some even views on world leaders. We're covering a lot here today. So <laughs> thanks so much, Leo. Well, and yeah. um, we'll be back in just a sec with you to see a real live coaching experience with Leo and Nick. So that'll be great. And if there are other questions that come up for Leo, please feel free to post them in the chat, either here in the Zoom room or on YouTube. Um, we're about halfway through our time together. So I just wanted to sort of give Leo a moment, first of all. Um, he's been doing a great job answering a bunch of questions. Uh, but I also just want to tune back into this course for anyone that um, might need to go. It's been half an hour. I totally understand that. I'd love to just recap a couple of program features and some tangible items on what Brain Hacks for Teens, Teen is Coach, this program really is and how it's going to be structured and just a little bit more on if you're interested, how you can start that conversation um, with Nicole or myself, again, even in the chat right now. Uh, if this is something that's of interest, we would love to have a discussion with you personally to understand your situation your teens, discuss with them. Nicole's just posted her email in the chat, so please feel free. Um, so a little bit on the program, it'll be eight weeks on Saturdays, just like we're doing right now. So online, of course, on Zoom. Um, and it'll really be experiential. So again, I mean, you've heard from Leo, my intention is to absolutely have everybody engaged and, and talking. I mean, to Leo's point, he made a suggestion and he changed the way an entire program was structured. and. I'm absolutely, as is Erickson, very open to learning as we go and very curious and wanting to make this of most value to the learners that choose to join us. So absolutely lots of room for questions, lots of room for feedback so that we can make this an amazing experience. And we'll be moving through um, a lot of different topics. As I mentioned before, we'll look at um, being solution focused and what that means. We'll be learning the tools that Leo mentioned around the four quadrants, powerful questions, listening, how to listen in order to make better decisions, how to share feedback so that it's actually heard, how to give, how to receive feedback as well, which can be really challenging when we do our best, something like a, an exam or an assignment, or when you don't get on a team or something disappointing happens. Sometimes it's really hard to receive that feedback. Um, we'll be talking a lot about how mistakes or perceived failures uh, really are opportunities and, and how you can create opportunities from them. Um, because I think that's a, that alone is a skill that I think we would all benefit from. Um, we'll also be talking about how to have conversations that lead to change with your parents, teachers, and friends. So again, really navigating some of those relationships that can be challenging siblings too. Um, and how to structure your time. So Leo's big, one of Leo's big benefits was looking at how he used his time being able to focus better. That's definitely one of the sessions we'll be looking at designing actions and how you can structure your time outside of school in a way that makes you happy and that you understand. And yeah, I'm seeing in the chat and definitely getting there because this is something that's very cool. We'll be talking about brain science, neuroscience, how the brain actually functions and how we'll be able to hack it with some of these tools. So you'll learn a bit about the brain, the science behind it, and we'll discuss about when you're in a conversation, how you can hack it and shift your perspective. So again, back to that point of if there's a disappointing situation or result, how you can shift your perspective to change how a tough situation seems. Um, so the brain conversation will be very cool. We'll be taking a look at really what's important to you, who you are and want to be and help you to get confident and do things that are new or you're not experienced at. So sometimes trying new things can be challenging and we'll take a look at how you can hack your brain again to get really confident and, and do those new things that you're not as experienced at um, and identify and act as the person you wanna be more of the time. So I think we all have this vision of the person we wanna be and it can be really disappointing when we don't show up that way. And um, what coaching has helped me do a lot personally in my own life is take a look at where I am, be really honest with myself, and then 
decide very clearly who I want to be clearly not just kind of better but really detailed as to what better would be like and then bridge that gap and we'll definitely be looking at a process that allows us to do that and practicing it in class so again iterating on that very hands-on experience-based structure of this course so that's a little bit about structure again eight weeks it'll be two hours and 20 minutes of class and we'll be really focused on again individual learner feedback making this an experience that's valuable for everyone to leo's point listening to all points of view and really making sure that it's going in a direction that learners want it to go with no homework i cannot stress that enough i think uh, huge huge value add to this course no homework just show up and learn a couple tips and tools that'll really set you up for being successful in high school and beyond with both yourself and your personal awareness as well as your relationships and how you communicate with others. So that's just a brief kind of summary again. And for anyone joining us after my initial introduction, my name is Kalina Maletic. I'll be helping to facilitate some of that content. And I've coached over 1500 hours with clients in 21 countries around the world. And I'm honored to be supporting Ericsson with this course and also newly as an enrollment advisor and have been a part of the Ericsson community for years, also being a learner. So I'm very grateful to be here and love the community and what it's done in terms of fostering real global connections for me. And as a community, it's so global. I think that'll be a really really great feature of this program. I mean, just on this call, we have people from Canada. I'm in Switzerland. We have people from Bulgaria. I think mentioned was South Africa, if I catch that right. Let me check. Emily, I know you're joining in from, from part of Africa. We've got a whole group um, of international. Kenya, fantastic. Yeah, we have people from all over the world, even on this call. So just a testament to the amazing global community that's here. Um, that I think will be a huge value add even outside of the course. I've got connections from my Ericsson training that still stand the test of time now, five years later. And uh, I mean, there are people here that are supporting me on this call right now. So um, the value of the community in and of itself is huge aside from any of the concepts and techniques or tools that we've already discussed. Um, and again, ah, with Vancouver, welcome Willa. Yeah, so it's, again, eight weeks, starts May 2nd, so next Saturday. So if you are interested, please do comment in the chat or share your email um, address or you've got Nicole's contact information. So please feel free to email Nicole directly. Um, we're starting next Saturday. So one week from today, May 2nd, we'll be getting started in this forum, just like this. So online, you can join from of course, the comfort of your own home, your own couch, um, and really start experiencing coaching. So I want to make sure that we can actually deliver on that. <laughs> and PJs to Nicole's point, absolutely. <laughs> um, so we've got the link here. We've got Nicole's email. Please feel free to just have an initial discussion, at least if this is something that's of interest. I mean, absolutely no risk to start a conversation and see how this might be a benefit for you in your personal situation. Um, and I would love to invite Leo and Nick to make sure that we get to experience some actual coaching here as promised. I would love to invite Leo and Nick back on camera to do just about 10 minutes here of coaching so that all of you here can experience exactly what it is that we're talking about. I mean, <laughs> the experience is worth more than words. So here we go. We've got Leo. Are you here with us to see you, Nick? Yep. Welcome back, Leo. And thank you so much again, guys, for dedicating some time on your Saturday to being here. It means so much to me, but also everyone joining in so that they can really experience what it is that we're talking about um, and learn from you, really. So thanks, Leo. I invite you to take it away. Okay, so is Nick also online? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so uh, what... So this is the start of our coaching session. We have about 10 minutes. So what is it that you want to talk about today? Well, I was wondering, um, so I'm a hockey player, but I can never really get myself like outside to practice. Like, could, like uh, what are some things that maybe I could do to try and like get myself outside more? Um, 
Uh, okay, so why do you think you want to be able to go outside more for this practice? Uh, so I can practice my hockey skills. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how are some ways that you can maybe like go outside, uh, go outside and practice? Like, what are some ways you can encourage yourself? Well, um, I guess if I had a friend there, maybe I could go and see them. Like, why is why is uh, practicing hockey important for you? Well, I want to get better, and I really don't want to let my team down. Uh, last year, we didn't have a great season, so I want this year to be a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, is why is your why is your like team or hockey uh very important for you? Well, I really love the sport, and uh, they're all good friends of mine. So. Yeah. Okay. So how will you know when you get better at hockey? Um, well, I don't know when we, when we start, uh, like kind of winning games and getting closer as friends. Yeah. Uh, so how will you know you've like, uh, got there or how will you know you, uh, got gotten better? Um, I guess when, like, uh, no, I don't really know. Uh, I'm not, I didn't think that far ahead. Okay. As if, um, oh, let's say, uh, like a one is like, you're not really sure of what you're doing in hockey right now. And 10 is like, you've already, uh, you already know, and you're already like a really good hockey player. Uh, where would you say you are now? I say I'm probably like a six. Mm -hmm. And where would you try to go or where do you want to be? I want to be a 10, but I think first I got to try and be a seven. A seven. Yeah. So how would you try to go from six to seven? I guess getting outside and practicing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think seven would look like? Probably um, being able to uh get more shots on point and uh being able to skate a bit better okay um what is something that like more specific like you talk about like getting outside and practicing what is something more specific that you think you can do to like encourage you to get outside since like i've noticed you said something about um sometimes you don't feel motivated or something like how would you motivate yourself to get outside maybe i could just like think about how last season went and how I really don't want that to happen again. How I'm, I want to get better so that I can help my team a bit more. Helping your team. Okay, so um, how will you dedicate yourself to like this practicing or how, like, yeah? Uh, I, there was this challenge that my team did a couple of years ago that we don't do anymore. Where it was like a uh, hundred shots a day. I guess I could try and do that challenge. That seems that seems cool. So, how many uh, times a week do you think you would try to be practicing? Uh, maybe like three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. Three or more times a week. So, um, how would you like? Okay, now imagine that you've already like been practicing, and now you're already like a really good hockey player, or like at least you got into seven, but maybe you got into like a nine or a ten already. Like, what were some things, if you're already there, what were some things you can say to, like, yourself now to encourage yourself? Um, think about uh, all the teams that beat you, and this time you beat them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's some great inspiration. Um, so, uh, would you say, how committed are you to uh, actually doing this and actually going outside three to four times a week or maybe 100 shots per day. So how would you like, uh, how would you be like accountable for that? Um, I could talk to my, my dad and say, uh, if I don't do this, then maybe, um, I don't know, I, I don't get an allowance for a week or something. Mm -hmm. So, like, for your parents to encourage you or something like that. Okay. Um, so, 
let's see how come uh how how com how committed are you to doing this uh doing this ch uh challenge for hockey from let's say a one to ten how committed are you um i'd say like an eight um i want to go out and do it it's just i can never find the time and i always feel like there are other things i i want to do yeah i i can understand that so as for as for this uh, hockey thing, then, do you, what do you say? Like, when might you do this in, let's say, a day? From, uh, when might when might you do this in a day? Well, um, I guess not now, but usually after school. So I guess at like four to five, I might be able to do it. Okay. So then, now after all of this, how committed do you think you are? say i think thinking about like what i could be i think i'm more like a nine nine and a half okay do you think you're satisfied with that or do you think you can really be able to do it yeah i think i'll be able to do it all right that's good so what do you think was the value of this uh coaching session well to i never really thought about like um what it would be like to be so much better and to like um, to be able to like beat the teams that beat me, and I think um, there's a lot of things that people like that are so simple and obvious that people don't even bother thinking about them, but they actually work. Yeah. So, what may be your first step to uh, doing to committing for this hockey trial thing? Um, getting outside later today and starting. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I believe that you can do it. Thank you, Nick. Wow. Thank you both so much for sharing openly and honestly. And Leo, I mean, my goodness, practicing publicly, that's that's a huge, huge sense of just, wow, trying something new there. So thank you. I'm, I'm really both impressed and glad to have been able to be a part of that. Um, Amazing, and Nick, I'll have to check in on uh, check in on those hundred shots. We'll see how that goes with you in the coming weeks. Um, I would love to again thank both Nick and Leo for being here today. I think such an amazing job on both parts for being willing to publicly share something going on in in your life, Nick, and and really honestly talk about that. I would love to hear Nick from you. You know what. How'd you feel about that, about getting coached by Leo? What, what are your thoughts? Um, at first, I wasn't too sure about it, but as uh, we kind of got into it a bit, uh, it was like, I really thought it was quite meaningful. Nice, yeah. And of course, I mean, 10 minutes. We've got a, <laughs> we had 10 minutes there. That was just a mini coaching session for sure. We'll have lots of time to practice even further than that, but really cool, Leo. I'd love to hear from you too. What was your experience of doing that? Um, I think that I was, so I haven't actually done like actual coaching in some time since my last uh, session in like last summer. So I think this was like a good practice and a good way to like get back into. Yeah, really cool. Again, I mean, practice, as I said earlier, I've, I've coached over 1500 hours and it, it's still, um, <laughs> It, there's still times where I don't necessarily feel like I've thought of the right question or have said the right thing. Um, but what I can assure you of is, I mean, Nick sitting there saying, hey, this was really meaningful. And so I think just holding the space for him to think about this new goal that he has or this existing goal, kind of bringing up his skill set. I mean, you held some great space for him to explore that. And that in and of itself is very, very helpful, I'd say. And, and Nick, back to you. What else? What else about how this was helpful, interesting? Um, well, previously when I was trying to get outside and practice, there was never any, really any accountability. Uh, and I re really never thought about putting any of it in place. So um, I think Leo raised a good point about uh, accountability and that got me thinking. And um, one of the things that my parents uh, are really generous and give me is they give me a couple dollars a week for an allowance. Uh, 
and I really appreciate that. So what if I was to not get that, then um, I probably wouldn't be as happy. So holding myself, holding that accountable if I don't get out and do it, um, I think is really good. Yeah, thanks. Accountability, again, something that goes well beyond being a teenager. I think we can all use a bit more accountability in our lives. And you came up with something really powerful and motivating. So that's huge. And I think for anyone, um, enhancing accountability by including someone else in your goal is a great way of being accountable, of course, to yourself, but also to an external measure. It's, it's a great strategy. So, I mean, great work, Nick, on coming up with that in 10 minutes and Leo holding space again, you guys, you guys really rocked it. I'm, I'm honored to have been able to be a part of it. And I want to thank you again for taking time on your Saturday of all things to be here. Um, we've got about five minutes left. So I really want to check in with everybody that's shown up here live. You just experienced coaching with Nick and Leo. And I would love to open up the chat on YouTube and here in the room for any other questions to Nick and Leo about the program, about coaching Erickson. I'd love to just open up the floor. We've got about five minutes left. So I'd love to address anything that's coming up. And again, in the meantime, while questions come up, I would just like to, again, remind you that this course, so Tina's Coach Brain Hacks for Teens is starting May 2nd. So next Saturday, it'll be at 10 a.m. PST, which is 1 p.m. Eastern. And I think that we're going to have a lot of fun and more than anything, really experience activities like this where every learner in the room will be able to practice some of these skills and solidify them. Because of course we can talk about being great communicators, listeners, being accountable. I mean, we can talk about it and the concepts and the theories. It's when we actually get to practice that I think a lot of the magic happens in the room when it comes to Erickson's training. So I'm very excited to say that that'll be happening on a weekly basis. Um, just a couple minutes here. So any questions before we, we sign out for the day and I wish you all an amazing weekend. Um, again, I, I wanna make sure I capture that. If someone would let me know if there's anything. Yeah, thanks, that was so cool. <laughs> Good comment, thank you so much. Um, I think it was cool. And I think that sometimes it can seem like coaching or these types of conversations, you know, I don't know, it might seem, well, at least when I started coaching, it seemed like, wow, can I do that? Can I really ask questions like that and help other people? Am I saying the right thing? And I think it's through practice that I got more confident and even seeing Leo as the conversation continued, you know, you really build confidence through practice. So I was thrilled to watch that. And Hey, we've got a comment here from Nick. I really want to be like Leo and be able to help people. Yeah. Yeah. I think no matter if, if you take this content and actually become a certified coach, um, that's one option. But as a teen, I think being able to bring it into situations like Leo mentioned with peers in a new program, a summer camp in at school with a group project with your parents when you're not necessarily seeing eye to eye and even for yourself when you're planning your day when you're feeling like you're not really sure you know how to focus or where to focus really starting to ask yourself and knowing that you have those answers if you just take a moment to ask yourself those powerful questions that leo mentioned today right why is this important um why did i start doing this project in the first place how how would structuring my time today be most efficient or what would make me happiest. I mean, yeah, I, I think that starting to ask ourselves those questions is, is really powerful and, and a great place to start. And then we do have the capacity to help others to your point, Nick. So a couple more questions here. Thank you, Kalina, great job, thanks. <laughs> um, and this will really have an impact in our communities, especially now that we have kids at home, great use of time. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different types of learning opportunities out there at the moment. And school, of course, is taking up some learner time. Um, but this is an opportunity to just share and show up and have some conversations with friends. Again, a global community. I think it could be a lot of fun, very low pressure to no pressure way of showing up. And if you don't want to share, you don't need to share. You can absolutely join in and just experience like I did. I just experienced Leo and Nick's interaction. That's totally 
an option and available to you. So whatever way you would feel comfortable and willing to show up um, is absolutely more than fine. And you'd be welcome with us in uh, Brain Hacks for Teens next Saturday. So I would love to see some of you there. And from Willa, he felt that his peers could not have this kind of communication. Who's that, he felt. Um, I might not be capturing that. If, if you would share a little bit more, I would love to, to address that just in our final minute here. Um, okay, I might have missed the earlier comment, but um, um, I also coach a 17 year old boy. Ah, okay. Yeah, something I'll say, I mean, this conversation, and I'd love to address this before we just sign off. So one more moment um, is that, of course, this is a more structured approach, right? It's really, Leo was actually walking through the key steps of a, of a real coaching conversation. Um, something that I find is, of course, you need the permission of the other person in order to be able to do that. And Nick showed up really ready as a, you know, potential client or in a coachy situation and they both really agreed to that type of conversation and communication um when it comes to peers just being again I, I think of I have a younger brother and I think of him gaming with peers that he's never even met and Nick mentioned that in the chat too certainly you know as you're gaming online you're not going to start coaching somebody out of the blue but as a coach I don't do that either I don't just start shooting questions at people without their permission so what I can say to address that point is absolutely um I can't have that kind of communication with my peers either, unless they, we have both agreed upon a coaching conversation. But what is really cool is that one or two of those questions in your day-to-day -day life can transform a conversation with your parents, with your friends, with all the parties we mentioned, your siblings. Um, if someone's showing up and they've just given you feedback, they told you, right, something, and you're feeling, whoa, okay, this, this feels I feel defensive or this could turn into an argument or I'm frustrated by this. If you're able to access that skill set in just a one sentence question as a reply, it's not a full coaching conversation, but that skill can help you to shift your own perspective and then that entire interaction. And that I believe is the power of coaching in everyday life. Um, and, and that's really, really powerful. And, and you don't need to go through the entire conversation to, to have that impact. So um, lots of applicable uses with people in everyday situations. Um, and thanks, Willa. It's a great, great point. Um, we are finalizing here. So just want to point your attention to the chat one more time. You can visit Tina's coach, Brain Hacks for Teens online. You can email myself or Nicole, feel free. And we'll have a personal chat with you to understand your situation. I want to thank you all so much for being here today with us and joining us for this webinar. I hope you created lots of value through your questions and experiencing Nick and Leo's interaction and hearing about Leo's experience. Again, my name's Kalina and I'm so grateful that you joined us here today. Please have a wonderful and safe rest of your weekend. And I'm excited to see everyone that joins us next week for the start of this program. Thank you so much and take care. Have a lovely, lovely evening, rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.